The optimizing for developer cycles, not CPU cycles. Also, don't forget that AREFs saved $400 million over the course of three years optimizing for CPU cycles. You know, may maybe there is a time, maybe, just saying, maybe there is a time you want to think a little bit about CPU cycles. Just saying, my, uh, you know, whenever I see these articles, before I even read it, you know, I feel like I get this snap judgment or it's just like, I already know what this article is going to be about. But, you know, maybe we don't. Maybe we have no idea. But uh, I had a good buddy that I'm working with at Netflix, and he said the funniest thing uh, that was probably the most astute, like, observation about DX, modern DX, which is if you feel it's better, then it's better. Modern DX, right? That's that's modern DX. If you think, if you feel that it's better, that's how we define modern DX, I think. And I think that's truly the best way to define it. If it feels better, it's probably better. DX, right? All right, performance in software development matters less than you might think. I bet that you waste plenty of CPU cycles and memory for zero good reasons somewhere you aren't looking at and wouldn't look at by intention. Well, that's why you use a inspector, right? You do a little bit of profiling. You see where things are being spent. You understand stuff. Example, binary versus textual encoding. Today, I had a talk to a fellow developer who argued that binary encoding is faster than textual. He isn't wrong. Binary encoding means less work uh, to the CPU. The talk was about an application that received messages around 100 bytes, 100 bytes once a second from around 20 to 30 IoT devices, not becoming more in the foreseeable future via MQTT. Okay, so probably, I mean, I agree. Te uh, binary is always better. Text technically is binary, but it's a representation on top. <laughs> um, but I assume this is like some sort of JSON, not JSON. But, you know, IoT devices typically have really low power, so it's always good to avoid JSON. This is why Deku is so fantastic. For today's PCs, 2023, that's a piece of cake, even for the weakest ones. The application does more than receiving those messages, but still, it's literally nothing. Yeah, reason fine. Reasonable, agree. A uh, much bigger problem is that binary encodings lack a lot of standard tooling. Look at all the standard U uh, Unix utilities like sed, grep, and cat, and many more that just lock uh, out of your toolbox with binary encodings. Sure, that's that's fair. This is a fair statement. This is actually a very fair statement that uh, using standard tools that operate over text will not operate over binary encodings. Agreed. I'm 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 on your team. You lose the inspectability of messages and network traffic with tools like Wireshark when things go wrong or you need to find bugs. Um, that's kind of funny, I guess, in some sense, because Wireshark literally takes binary encodings and displays it to you in a nice way. So, I mean, I do agree that when it tries to convert your binary into some sort of ASCII slash UTF-8 or whatever it does, you can't read it because it's just binary. But yeah, okay. When a stream of data is text, you just look at it and it's most likely makes sense of it. Not with binary, sorry. Unix has the philosophy. Text is the universal protocol for good reasons. Okay. 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 Takeaway. Optimize for developer performance, not hardware performance. Developer costs more than CPU cycles in most cases, and when you spot a bottlenecks, do your homework and profile the application. No uninformed gut feeling refactoring to make code faster. Completely, 110% agree with this statement, right? I cannot agree with the statement more, which is you should never refactor your code for performance without knowing why you're refactoring for performance, 100%. But there is something to be said about writing code, as Casey Moratori says, uh, just non-pessimize. Like writing code in such a way that's just fast because you think through things. You don't make needless copies. You don't do these things. Like the JavaScript way is to throw in the three dots, right? Every time you get some object, you're like, immutability is the best way for software development. And so you just copy all over the place. And so is that the better way to do it? I don't think it's personally the better way to do it. I'm not buying that it's better DX. Um, and so it's like you writing pessimized code plus you're writing, uh, I, I don't think you're writing any better DX code, right? Uh, so stop thinking about performance beforehand. Every time you write code and you feel you need to make the fastest solution or introduce some clever pre-calculated variable, think twice. I do agree with this as well. I do agree with this uh, for the most part as well. I never try to make something fastest. Fastest is hard to do. That's hard to do. It is. It's just truly hard to do. Since a lot of good software development advice today, and I'd call it state-of-the-art knowledge, advocates against premature optimizations, it's still impressive that these performance discussions with colleagues never vanish and perhaps won't ever. Fair. Uh, I still catch myself uh, wanting to optimize where there's nothing to optimize for now. Knowing this feeling and not uh, and, be, and being able to suppress it, I'd consider myself healed from premature, uh, premature optimization disease. Okay, so here's one problem with this kind of thing. Uh, Elwald Benes. Be, uh, be, 
Benes, as if that's how you say your name, I have no idea. But uh, the one problem about this statement is this is also how you get JavaScript on a server, right? This is also how you can rack up your, your, your costs as you grow. If you actually make a successful product that goes from no users to hundreds of thousands of users, all of a sudden these, co these, these decisions do cost a lot of money and then you can't rewrite it. And so you are stuck with larger, higher cost bills in which you cannot undo because the undoing process is a lot more expensive. So there is some route of going, okay, how do we build this so that it can be mostly optimized and when we need to, we can optimize it. But at the same time, we don't have to worry too hard, right? So good, uh, good, good argument for Go on the back end. Uh, I know a lot of people want to just be able to write a singular language. They want to be able to write components not knowing whether they're on the server or, you know, on the client. I get that that's a very hot thing to do, uh, you know, but it comes at cost. Everything comes at cost. And so that's the hard part is what is the future you're predicting and build for that future. So if you think, okay, yeah, like your 30 IoT vice devices that ping you every second and there's like 30, 20 to 30 of them and that is it, that is the future of you. Why are you optimizing that? We all know that that's, that's a non-optimizable situation. You don't need to. Don't even think about it, right? But if your goal is to attach new IoT devices all the time, maybe at some point think of a way to have some sort of zero allocation scheme and just put that in from the beginning. It's not hard. Types are not hard, right? You just got to solve the problem you want to solve. What is the problem is what I'm trying to say. And so that's just my personal take on this. I think it's the right take. I can be kind of convinced either way, I think, in some sense for this one. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, I usually take the expected usage, 10x the load test against that. This is truly not a bad way to kind of do it. Like, do you fall within the 10x bounds, right? Because one of the things we like to say at Netflix, which I think is a really funny phrase, is that we did not plan for overwhelming success. And because we didn't plan for overwhelming success, it actually caused like a whole series of issues, things we had to solve, things we had to think about. And that actually causes, uh, it causes a lot of problems, right? It causes a lot of things that uh, you don't see coming because you didn't plan for it to actually happen a certain way. And so kind of just an interesting world to live in. I don't know. Um, do I work at Netflix? Do I work at Netflix? Hey, someone answer for the guy. Do I work at Netflix? <laughs> Anyways. Um, I like the thought behind the article, which is performance isn't number one. You just got to be able to know how to gauge it, right? What is the gauge of performance? The name. Is why are you guys making fun of me? I really don't appreciate that. You know, my feelings are a little hurt, okay? Okay? Ow. Why are you calling Netflix soy? Why are you being like that? Why are you being like that? It's not even nice at all. The Primogen. 